Webster's Walk. This is Windy Edge Farm. In the middle of summer, Windy Edge Farm was a dry and dusty place. It had not rained for weeks and weeks and all the animals felt hot and grumpy. The hens used the rhubarb plant as if its leaves were parasols and the pigs kicked over their water trough and rolled in the mud to cool their baking skins. Most upset of all were the ducks. The scorching sun had dried up all the water in their pond. Now the only water they had was in a tub that anger spilled up every day. There's anger. One morning, Angus told the ducks he was going to have a swim in the river. Why don't you come too, he said, sloshing water into their tub. But only Webster heard him. The others were all too busy squabbling over whose turn it was to have a splash in the shallow water. All day, Webster wondered about the river. What was it? Where was it? If Angus was going there to swim, it must be a very watery place. Webster began to plan. Early next morning, Webster hopped onto the rim of the tub and stood up tall. Today, he quacked, I'm going to find the river. Who's coming with me? I'll come, said Wilma, who followed Webster everywhere. And me, quacked Will Winnie, who le never let Wilma out of her sight. One by one, all the ducks joined the line. Webster led them past the pigsty. and through the orchard, where they found the goats. Excuse me, said Webster politely. Do you know the way to the river, please? But Clover and Hazel didn't bother to reply. They were too busy trying to pull the washing off the line. In the cornfield, they came across a very scruffy gentleman. Know the way to the river please Webster asked him but the man stayed silent and kept pointing in two different directions at once now Webster was more confused than ever but he waddled on with all the other ducks behind him but they were on the right road after all at last they reached a place where lots of water was flowing along between shady banks. Webster quacked with relief as he waddled down the bank and dipped his hot aching feet in the water. The others plunged in after him and they all set off across the river. It was very different from their old pond where the water had been warm and murky. But here it was cool and so clear that they could see right down to the bottom. Most surprising of all, this water kept on moving. The ducks discovered that they didn't need to paddle with their feet because the river carried them along. But when they turned round and tried to swim back again, it was much more difficult. They dipped their heads in the cool water and turned right upside down to have a better look. There were all sorts of tasty things to eat among the water weeds and the ducks realised just how hungry they were. As they drifted downstream, they met some of the wild birds that lived beside the river. The beautiful swans, the silent heron, the shy moorhen and the brilliant kingfisher. They even met some birds who looked just like they did. 
except their feathers were green and brown and grey instead of white. How lucky these ducks were, thought Webster, to have the river as their home. The ducks were so busy enjoying themselves that they didn't notice the huge dark clouds gathering in the sky. The reed warblers stopped chattering in the rushes and a strange silence fell over the river. Suddenly, a brilliant flash lit up the sky and thunder began to crack and roar. The ducks were scared and even Webster wished that he was back in the farmyard. They huddled together under the bridge and watched in silence as huge drops of rain splashed faster and faster onto the river, spreading great ripples over the surface. In a while, the storm stopped as suddenly as it had begun and the sun crept out from behind the clouds. But the river no longer seemed such a friendly place and the ducks set off wearily for home. Just then, Mrs Finley and Angus came driving along. They saw the line of ducks straggling up the road and managed to stop just in time. There you are, cried Angus, jumping out. We wondered where you'd got to. And he helped the ducks into the back of the pickup. The dogs teased them as they bumped and rattled along, but the ducks didn't care. They would soon be home at Windy Edge Farm. And when they arrived, they found that the rain had filled up their pond again. With quacks of delight, they waddled down the bank and plopped into the water. Webster thought of the river with its cool water and shady banks. But this old pond was still his favourite place. Round and round he swam with all the other ducks behind him until the sun went down. The end.